Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures. Today's topic is going to be connective tissue disorders. Let's talk about Marfan syndrome. Patients who present with Marfan syndrome will have lens subluxation, dilation with or without dissecting aneurysm of the ascending aorta, laxity with kyphoscoliosis, arachnodactyly and a tall, long, slim limbs, and little fat appearance in terms of their stretcher. The fibrillin gene, which is 15Q21, is going to be present, and there's a mutation on that gene. It's autosomal dominant, and patients who come in may have a previous history of hypotonia and pectus excavatum. So those are some of the key words you want to associate with Marfan's. What about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Here the key findings are droopy ears, aortic dilation, blue sclera, ectopic lentis, and hyperextensible skin with easy bruisability and poor wound healing. So with Ehlers-Danlos the key finding is type 1 that's the most common type. The droopy ears, aortic root dilation, blue sclera, ectopic lentis, association with ASD, mitral valve prolapse, and tricuspid valve prolapse, and also the hyperextensible skin. So all those are really important characteristics of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. What about a patient who presents with a short stretcher? Patient has a small foramen magnum and they have short cranial base with prominent foreheads along with lumbar lordosis. What kind of a condition are you associating this patient with? The answer here is achondroplasia, also known as hypochondroplasia, and this is autosomal dominant genetics. And the key gene here is going to be a fibroblast growth factor receptor 3 at 4p16,3. It's important to know some of these genetic associations. They might help you choose the correct answer on some questions. Patients with achondroplasia have normal intelligence and sometimes they can have compression of their spinal cord, a small eustachian tube, along with otitis media and hearing loss. What about a patient who presents with characteristic findings of mental retardation, behavioral abnormalities, patient has a ventricular septal defect, they also have a previous history of hyperactivity in childhood, and fine motor dysfunction along with short palpable fissures, maxillary hypoplasia, short nose, smooth philtrum, and a smooth upper lip. Those are some of the key characteristics patients have when they have fetal alcohol syndrome. Alcohol is the most common teratogen and the etiology of fetal alcohol syndrome um, has several important points you should be aware of. It's not until the fourth to sixth drink that there will be additional subtle features of fetal alcohol syndrome that are manifested. And the severity of maternal alcohol use and extent and severity of the pattern is actually the most important um, factor in determining whether or not the child will have fetal alcohol syndrome. In addition, after 8 to 10 drinks per day, there's going to be an appearance of the characteristics of fetal alcohol syndrome forming. So, with fetal alcohol syndrome, remember the mild to moderate microcephaly with palpable fissures, short nose, short philtrum, along with growth deficiency and mental retardation. Those are the key findings you want to associate with 
fetal alcohol syndrome. And what about a patient who comes in and presents to you with pulmonary hypoplasia, Potter's facies, where they have low set ears, compressed flat nose and limb anomalies, and a breech presentation, along with respiratory insufficiency that can lead to death. This patient may have Potter syndrome. It's a condition where patients have um, degradation or agenesis of their kidneys in addition to developing oligohydramnios causing fetal compression and pulmonary hypoplasia. With patients who have oligohydramnios because of the re Potter uh, syndrome, you want to get an ultrasound. And this is because many patients who have first degree relatives have certain asymptomatic malformations and the ultrasound will help you um, make that finding. Now what about a patient who presents to you with certain key findings of cardiac anomalies, a cleft lip, mid-face hypoplasia, and patients also have long thin fingers. So cardiac anomalies, mid-face hypoplasia, and cleft lip, along with long thin fingers. This is one of the key associations with fetal valproate syndrome. So fetal valproate syndrome has cardiac anomalies with mid-face hypoplasia and cleft lip. Finally, I want to talk about a patient who presents with hirsutism, rib abnormalities, a abnormal palmar crease. Patient also complains of cupid bow lips and there's a history of a mom who has seizures and the mom is on valproate or phenobarbital or carbamazepine. What is the disease in this case? The answer is fetal hydantoin syndrome. So fetal hydantoin syndrome is the disease that you want to associate with a parent who has a history of seizures taking carbamazepine, valproate, phenobarbital, and they have hirsutism, short neck, facial features that are dysmorphic, growth deficiencies, and a cupid's bow lips. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures and good luck in your preparation for the Comlex USMLE and Medical School.